Assalamu alaikum, hello and welcome dear viewers. The sharpness and eloquence of her father, mother and grandfather, peace be upon them. The day after the tragedy of Attaf, the members of Ahl al-Bayt were made to leave en route to Kufa in order that they be presented to Ibn Ziyad. Among the prisoners were Zainab, her sister Umm Kulthum, other women of the Bani Hashim, Imam Zain al-Abideen, three young sons of Imam Hassan, and other daughters of Imam Hussein. When on their way, they reached the battlefield, a heart-rending sight met their eyes. The bodies of the martyrs lay naked on the burning sand, covered with dust and blood. The enemy had not buried them, although they had buried their own dead. Seeing the scene of carnage, Imam al-Sajjad was so affected that he appeared to be on the verge of death himself. Noticing his state, Zainab said to him, O oh, you who are a reminder of my grandfather and father, what has happened to you? For I see that you are about to lose your life. The scholars and historians of Ahl al-Bayt have said it is as if Zainab was acting like a temporary wakil of the Imam till Imam al-Sajjad regained his strength. He replied, Dear aunt, how can I be otherwise when I see that the bodies of my father, uncle, brothers and cousins are lying on the ground, neglected while their clothes has been removed and there is no arrangement for shrouding and burying them. Zainab then also openly lamented the murder of her beloved brother and their imprisonment. Omar ibn Sa'd had entrusted the severed heads of Hussein, his sons and other martyrs to different tribal chiefs so that on the way people would see that various tribes had been taken in the part, taken in the battle and none would dare to interrupt their march. The captives were made to ride on camels without saddles, their faces unveiled for all the world to see while ahead of them, their captors gleefully carried the chopped off heads of their loved ones, impaled on spears. Kufa was then regarded as the principal city of Islam. Ali had made it his capital during his caliphate, and here Zainab and Umm Kulthum had once lived, respected and loved. Now they came to the city of their memories as captives, as prisoners, Devoid of respect, devoid of veneration, they were once given. At night when they arrived at the city and the castle of Ibn Ziyad was shot, so they were made to camp outside. When he was informed of their arrival the next day, he ordered a great function to take place to which all would be invited without distinction. The head of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, was to be placed on a gold tray near the court chair and the heads of the other martyrs were also to be displaced. The people of Kufa were told that some tribe had committed aggression against the Muslims, but the Muslims had secured victory and because of this there was to be a celebration. Festively dressed and in anticipation of joyful celebrations, the people poured into the streets and marked marketplace and the music of victory was heard as the captives arrived. But there were a few who guessed the truth and they looked on with downcast eyes. One woman on recognizing, recognizing Zainab and her retinue of unveiled women ran into her house and brought them all head covers and sheets with which to cover their bodies but they were not allowed to preserve their modesty and the enemy guards snatched them away. When Zainab saw some of the men and women who had realized what had really happened, weeping and wailing, she bade them to, qui to quiet and spoke to them with piercing eloquence and insight. Praise be to Allah and blessings be on my grandfather Muhammad and his purified and chosen progeny. 
So now, O oh people who deceive, forsake and contrive, it is you who weep. May Allah not stop your tears and may your chest burn incessantly with the fire of grief and sorrow. Your example is that of a woman who assiduously prepares a strong rope and then untwines it herself, wasting her own hard labor. You swear such false oaths which bear no truthfulness at all. Beware that you have nothing except vain talk, false pride, mischief, malice, evil, rancor, falsehood, and sycophancy. Beware that your position is that of slave, maids, and poor chaste girls who are but the meanest beings. Your hearts are full of enmity and rancor. You are like the vegetation that grows on filthy soil and is yet green or like the mortar applied onto graves. You should know that you have perpetrated a very morbid deed and that have prepared evil provision for your next life. Because of which Allah's anger is against you and his wrath would fall upon you. Now you are crying aloud and wailing over my brother. Yes, cry because it behoves you to cry. Yes, we profusely and laugh less because you have earned the shame of killing the Imam of the age. The stain of his blood is now on your clothes and you cannot remove it, nor you can secure acquittal from the charge of killing the son of the last prophet of Allah, the chief of the youth in paradise. You have killed the person who was your support, the knower of the Sunnah and the ultimate arbitrator at that time of your mutual disputations. He was the basis of your talks and actions. He was your place of refuge in the event of hardship. Know that you have been guilty of the most heinous crime in the world and have prepared the worst provision for the day of judgment. Curses be upon you and may destruction overtake you. Your efforts have gone wasted and have you been ruined. You have been transacted a losing trade. You have become the victim of Allah's wrath and have fallen into ignominy and degradation. O oh, people of Kufa, woe upon you. Do you realize which piece of Muhammad's heart you have severed? Which pledge you have broken? Whose blood you have shed? And whose honor you have discredited? You have certainly committed such a crime because of which the sky may fall down on the earth. The earth may crack and mountains crumble to pieces. By killing your Imam, you have committed a singularly evil act of rebellious behavior and heedlessness towards dignity. In view of all these acts, would you wonder if blood should rain down from the sky? In any case, you should mind that the chastisement of this next world will be severe. At that juncture, there will be no one to help you. Do not regard the time and opportunity given you by Allah as small and unimportant and do not be satisfied with it because if Allah is not quick in acting, it does not imply that he is unable. For him, there is no fear that the time of vengeance is passing away. Allah is certainly keeping watch over you. People wept, putting their fingers in their mouth and biting them without appealing. Thank <laughs> you.